myths are clues to the rapture of being alive. Uh, that's what it's all finally about. One has eaten of the tree of the knowledge. One comes into a field of opposites. Everything in the field of time is dual, past and future, light and dark, good and evil, dead and alive. August 6, 2007. I've come to Hiroshima to understand evil, what kills us. My fellow physicists never recall Hiroshima, perhaps because we make Hiroshima possible. But here they remember. Every year, the citizens of Japan meet at the peace memorial to honor victims of the Hiroshima Holocaust and pray for the end of all wars. Children write messages of love and lanterns that represent the souls of their ancestors and place them down the river Ata to guide them in their last journey to the ocean. When the last wandering souls fade into the river, I join the citizens that send proposals to the mayor of Hiroshima to advance a world without nuclear weapons. Dear Mayor of Hiroshima, I would like you to warn mankind about the experiments taking place at the European Center for Nuclear Research and the so-called Black Hole Factory. They will replicate the awesome scales of energy that took place during the Big Bang, producing black holes at the rate of one per second. An ancient phase of matter, the quark-gluon plasma, is to be investigated by the LHC's ALICE detector, where massive lead nuclei will be smashed together. By heating up this matter, we are going to liberate again these quarks and gluons from their prison, from their proton and neutron prison. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Gray, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this, the seventh and final Ford MIT Nobel Laureate Lecture. On behalf of the Institute, I would like to express our gratitude 
to the Ford Motor Corporation for its sponsorship of this program over the last five years. Frank Wilczek received the Nobel Prize in Physics in October 2004. And I quote from the citation, for the discovery of asymptotic freedom and the theory of the strong interaction, end quote, as he speaks today on the universe is a strange place. Please join me in welcoming Professor Wilczek. I heard uh, some, some uh, questions that maybe the next generation of particle colliders would create conditions in which you might create what? I'm create, create high enough energy conditions that for some reason uh, a tiny black hole might spontaneously yes. be created, which could be well, very dangerous. Is this plausible <laughs> at all, or is it completely unrealistic? Well, there are two, there are two, quest there are two questions there. Uh, so the first question was, or statement was that uh, you've read that there are theoretical speculations that at very high, at the next generation of high energy accelerators, uh, one might produce small black holes. And that's true. Otherwise, respectable physicists have suggested that kind of thing. This was the world's first particle accelerator. It employed principles that are still in use today. Positively charged nuclear particles, protons, were injected into this little ring where they were subjected to a powerful electromagnetic field. Since protons are positively charged, they were pulled around toward the negative side of the field. Then the polarity of the electrical field was reversed, hurrying the protons around here, and by repeating the process, you could get them going at a pretty good clip until they spiraled on out to the edge of the ring and finally collided with this target here. This prototype was built in Berkeley, California in 1930. Particle accelerators have been getting bigger and bigger ever since. The larger the accelerator, the smaller the scale to which it can probe the fundamental structures of nature. And I'm standing in the midst of the world's largest particle accelerator. A 27 kilometer ring under the plains of Providence. The Large Hydrogen Collider delivers a billion times more power than the first accelerator used to research the atomic bomb. Enough energy to create a black hole. Nature is so inventive and malicious that it's a logical possibility, it's always a logical possibility when you do something that's never been done before that'll lead to a catastrophe. But just to conclude, I've never been so confident, though, of making a prediction as when uh, I was called to sit on a panel about the possibility of an accelerator turning on and, and ending the world. Uh, predicting that it won't is very safe, because if your prediction is wrong, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, th I think with that, it's appropriate to uh, end, and I'll answer other questions in private. Thank you. Despite his wicked sense of humor, Dr. Wilthek is worried. He and fellow physicist Dr. Walter Wagner wrote a letter together to Scientific America warning against the risks of creating dark matter here on Earth. Many black holes could be created by smashing a proton into an antiproton with enough energy. If one were created near a large concentration of mass, and if it started absorbing that mass before exploding, the black hole could reach a relatively stable half-life and thus continue to grow. If this happened on the Earth, the mini black hole would be drawn by gravity toward the center of the planet, absorbing matter along the way and devouring the entire planet within minutes.